if we if we implement this in solver, what do you think will happen? If we implement this third third type of uh, um, hot top in server, so instead of the originally um, original two decision variables, we have three decision variables now. Okay, what will happen? <coughs> Okay, okay, so the third decision variable will be zero, right? Okay. And uh, next thing, we want to continue. Okay, we'll look at, so we look at these two, and uh, the third thing, the impact on the optimal object function value of force the changes in this variable. In this case, for example, we implement this Typhoon Lagoon in solver, okay? And uh, we know that it's going to be um, zero in the optimal solution. The x3 value will be zero. We're not going to produce any because it's hurting our objective function value. But uh, what if uh, the management say, okay, let's just produce one. <coughs> then that sensitivity analysis report will tell us what's the impact on the objective function value. Actually, we already solved it, but there is a place that it will tell you. Okay. Oh, did I went back? No, I went back. Okay, so in in this uh, in this solver, I implemented it, and uh, I run the sensitivity analysis report. Okay, so this is a new report. This new report is based on this new model. When I implement this third model here, and uh, there is one place we're going to look at now. It's called the reduced cost. That's in the first table uh, that we look at. By the way didn't really look at this reduced cost part. Okay, and look at this third. Um, sorry, it's rounded up again. It should be negative 13.36. Okay, that's uh, what we just calculated. That's the total impact on total impact. On this objective function value, if of uh, forced change to this value here, change value to here. So the reduced cost gives us uh, the to the impact on your object function value if the decision variable here is forced to change to increase one unit. Okay, it's pretty clear that. Uh, any decision variables, say in this case, it's a maximization problem. Okay, in maximization problems, any decision variables with a negative reduced cost should have a zero final value because we are maximizing the object function value. Okay, and if it has a negative reduced cost, that means increasing it by one more unit, it will decrease your object function value. Okay, and so it should be remain to be zero here. And we calculated this 13 using that uh, the profit, the unit profit, subtract uh, the shadow price, the total shadow price, the total resource uh, um, cost calculated from the shadow price. Okay, so that's the reduced cost. And uh, for maximization problems, okay, so this is a table that summarizes the reduced cost. For maximization problems, if the optimal value of the decision variable is at a simple lower bound, for example, if uh, it's, um, we only have, say, x to i is greater than or equal to 0, so 0 would be the simple lower bound. Okay, then just look at this one first. Then the reduced cost of that decision variable should be negative. That's uh, exactly what we just talked about. That's a negative 13. Okay. And that decision variable, which is at x3, it, it's equal to 0. And it's a maximization problem. OK. And then you look at <coughs> this bottom one. If it's in a maximization problem and uh, the decision variable is at a, a simple upper bound, for example, say the management said, OK, even though uh, we, we, we produce these two, these three types, but uh, say for the hydrolysis, we produce no more than 50 units um, because of certain issues. Okay, then, okay, so x2 
if we set, oh sorry, less than. Oops, did I did it went back? Hmm. How come it went back? Oh, oh here. Here. So it would do less than. Less than equal to 50. Suppose we set this bound as uh, x2 less than equal to 50. And uh, when you run the solver, the final result uh, um, you get is uh, x2 value equals to 50. That is what it means that it's at the simple upper bound. OK, it equals to its simple upper bound. Then we know that the optimal value of the reduced cost is greater than or equal to 0. It can be equal to zero, but it can be greater than zero. Think about it, see if it makes sense. <coughs> Think about it. so the reduced cost is the impact on your object function value, okay? And it's a maximization problem, so you want your object function value to increase as much as you can. And uh, this this decision variable has a greater than equal to zero reduced cost, which means increasing this decision variable's value can help improve your object function value. But uh, why it's uh, at, this, at this value? Because there is a bound. It cannot increase anymore. OK, if there is no, no bound like this, then this x2 will keep increasing OK, until it hit the constraint. And uh, in that case, the reduced cost probably will be just 0. OK, so these are about the reduced cost and uh, you can when you go home please uh, take a look at this uh, table and if you are taking it online then then pause here um, make sense out of those things it helps you understand what the reduced cost and uh, um, the impact on the objective function and the lower bound simple lower bound simple upper bound okay <coughs> now let's uh, Look at this one. Okay, suppose this uh, typhoon lacoon now required only seven hours of labor rather than eight. Is it now profitable to produce any? Go back to here. So now it says uh, instead of uh, instead of eight hours, it now only requires seven units. Is it produce profitable to produce to produce any? Yes. Okay, why? What do you look at? Okay, okay, we'll look at this shadow price here. Originally it's eight hours uh, and you are losing eight times uh, about seventeen units. Okay. And now if it's a seven unit then you add uh, you add one more back no, to be just to be consistent. You add this back, right? So that would be more than this. Uh, um, um, more than this uh, three um, three twenty. So it's uh, profitable to produce it. Okay. So how many units should <coughs> this uh, this uh, um, typhoon lagoon requires for in terms of uh, labor in order to make it uh, profitable to produce any? So for each each unit, we are making three twenty. Okay, how many units? So we set this as x. Ah, uh, just to be differentiate. What's that? Seven L. Or seven or below. Can it be more than seven? So to see if it's profitable, it, this need to be greater than or equal to two hundred plus this L times this, uh, this, right? Does that make sense? OK. Hey. So if we go back here, I, I have it calculated. And uh, Sarah is 7.2. <laughs> OK. Hmm. 
Okay, so now if we, it's a seven units, then it's profitable. And uh, if uh, as long as uh, it requires less than seven point two units of labor, it is profitable. Okay. And so, for example, this value here. This value here will appear as the reduced cost if we implement this model and we put a bound on this uh, Typhoon Lagoon <coughs> and it will have this uh, 3.31 as the reduced cost because that measures the impact on your objective function. So we are seeing that now for every one unit of this third type of hot top that you produce, you're going to add $3.31 to your total profit pool. Okay. Okay. Um, then the last thing which will make it messy. It says degeneracy. Okay. If the allowable increase or decrease on any constraint is zero, it may indicate the degeneracy. So if uh, we go to here. Here, another special situation. Let me see if you guys still remember. So what does a zero indicate if it's here? A zero here indicate what? Right, right, right. That's a very straightforward. But what, what kind of a <laughs> special situation does that indicate? If it's a zero. Alternative, for that. Alternative solution. Okay, okay. Yeah, if a zero happens here, then it's an indicator of the generacy. Okay. So if there is zero in this uh, table, that's an indication of degeneracy. And when degeneracy happens, a lot of the things that we talk about just now won't hold. <coughs> so you can see when you run the sensitivity analysis report, there are a lot of things to check. This is probably the first thing to check, okay? To see, okay, if it's degeneracy. If it's degeneracy, then a lot of things won't work. First, the master mentioned earlier for detecting alternate optimal solution cannot be relied upon. So if you see um, zeros in both, uh, in the allowable increase or decrease in both tables, um, you cannot say whether there is alternative solution or not. Okay, because uh, a zero under in the, in the third table means, okay, generate, then even though you have a zero in the objective function coefficient, uh, allowable increase, decrease, it's not reliable to see whether it's alternative or not, Wh whether there are alternative solution or not. Second, the reduced cost for the changing cells may not be unique. Also, the objective function coefficient for changing cells must change by at least as much as their respective reduced cost before the optimal solution would change. Um, so there may be like a different set of reduced cost. It may not be unique. So when you, when different people um, solve it on solver and run it, it may, and when, when you look at the sensitivity report, the reduced cost may be different on, on both of the report. Okay, and uh, and this part, the object function coefficient for the changing cell must change at least as much as the reduced cost before the optimal solution would change. So what, it, what, what this one is saying is that Let's go back to here again. Okay, so suppose there is a degeneracy here. Okay, and we are we when we look at those allowable increase or decrease. Um, I'm going to just make up make make up some value here. Sorry, that does not make sense, <laughs> but I just put this value here to illustrate. So if uh, if say oh oh this this one don't have to be changed this one. So this one is zero. So that means it, it, the problem degenerates. Okay. And uh, the manager is still interested know, to know that uh, 
um, how many units of uh, let me see this is a reduce it. this is a positive impact decrease how many how many units of of profit of this equal sparse can change without changing the optimal solution which means we'll still make the same amount of uh, and originally when you look at it it's uh, 50 units here but it says when to generate the object function coefficient probably have to change more than 50 probably have to change more than 60 which is uh, reduce the cost here in order for the solution to change which actually is a good thing right because you know usually what what you care about is uh, um, how much how reliable how reliable that uh, your current uh, solution is and uh, when the problem degenerates you know there is a bigger range that your object function coefficient can change okay um, it's probably more than the current uh, um, more than what is indicated by the allowable increase or decrease in that sensitivity report and uh, uh, when the solution degenerates, the, the allowable increase and the decrease for the objective function coefficient still hold. And in fact, the coefficients may have to be changed beyond the allowable increase and decrease limit before the optimal solution changes. Okay, read this again. <coughs> that's, that's what we just talked about, right? The allowable increase, uh, decrease, it still holds, which means uh, when you change the allow when you change the objective function coefficients within the current allowable increase and the decrease the solution will still be the same in fact it's uh, those coefficients can change more than that and uh, more than probably more than um, to the amount indicated by the reduced cost okay so what this one is saying let me just illustrate this so for example the current allowable decrease allowable increase um, like the the, the the current coefficient plus minus and a plus allowable increase is say 200 and 450 this range is what is indicated by your current uh, sensitivity report okay what it says is when the problem degenerates, you can probably even change more than this. So when it goes to say to so oh sorry, it's the other side. <coughs> yeah. What this one is saying that okay, probably if you change to one hundred fifty and this way you change to five hundred, your solution still won't change. However, we don't know that. All we know is that this range still hold, and when you go beyond that range, it will still hold. But we don't know what's that range, what's the true range is. We only know a subset of that range. Within range, the objective function coefficient can change without changing your optimal solution. And that sub subset is that uh, allowable increase decrease indicated in your sensitivity report. Okay. And then the given shadow prices and their ranges may still be interpreted the same way, uh, but they may not be re unique. Again, it seems like the reduced cost makes sense, right? The reduced cost is calculated using the marginal profit and the, the shadow prices. So if the reduced cost uh, in the case of degeneracy are not unique, shadow price may not be unique too. So you may have different set of shadow prices. Okay. And so a different set of shadow price and the range may be applying to may apply to the problem. Okay. So that that's those impact from the degeneracy.